Welcome to the Survivor Fans Podcast. I'm Joanne. And I'm Stacy. And we're waiting to interview with Brett from Survivor Samoa. So, Brett, tell us how you were chosen to be on the show. Um, I was um, actually in Las Vegas for a trade show. Um, I have a clothing company, and when I was there, I was uh, confronted by some casting associates for the show, and they're like, "Hey, do you want to do you want to take part in this experience? Just kind of open the door." Um, which encouraged me to apply, and then I went through this, the standard interview process, and out of nowhere, I was actually selected, which I was like, whoa, did not expect that. But I, I had been a pretty big fan of the show, especially early on. And Excellent. Like, we love that. I, I was like, you know what? I was like, I can do this. I like, this is pretty, it looks easy. I mean, so on and so forth. And the day two, I'm like, this is a sick joke. I was like, send me home. <laughs> I was like, I need a burger. <laughs> so, you know, definitely was a phenomenal opportunity. How much time did you have before you knew you were going out? And then what did you do to prepare yourself during that time? Um, well, going through that process, uh, mentally, you know, it was pretty ambiguous as to if I was going until about less than a month before I went. Um, so I mentally had to prepare before that, knowing the fact that I may or may not be going. Right. And so that, and then once I... What they said, Brett, you're going to Samoa. I was like, all right, I need to start working out. <laughs> so I started like doing some work. I did like some work. I did some like like a weight training regimen. Mm -hmm. I had a strict diet to try to emotionally detach myself from eating, and read like books on gaming and like exercise and stuff that you know most of it probably didn't really pertain to the game. But I felt really cool and important when I was doing it. You, you felt good about your prep going out then. Yeah, I mean, if everyone feels good about their prep. I mean, you ask those people like, dude, I watched. 12 seasons and you're like what? and I went on the treadmill like once a week like awesome and then you got the person who's like he's like I went to outdoor school for two years yeah. he's like I know everything you know it's a game that involves many facets people are prepared for different things certain people were prepared for the physical component certain people were compared were well prepared for the social aspect certain people were prepared for the survival aspect I mean so there's multiple areas of preparation was there any particular focus for you uh, I mean, naturally, I was prepared for the social aspect, and then I tried to, like, read a survival book before I left, and I was, like, trying to fi start a fire with a bow, uh -huh. like, on my yeah, back porch. Yeah. So Any success? Uh, yeah, I got some smoke. smoke? I got some smoke. I was like, you know what? Well, it that doesn't, happen then. That doesn't thinking... start the fire, so, right. you know, that wasn't my forte, but, you know, I guess I have a lifetime to... So, when it comes to the social game, what hmm. does that mean to you? And then, how did you approach it while you were out there? Was there anything specific that you yeah. were focused on? Yeah, I mean, if I were to tell you my strategy, I'd have to kill you. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, my strategy is very basic. Um, you know, working within my own skill sets and being relational. And basically, what I did is I chose to operate in terms of the gameplay as I would with my business and tried to create. Need, or basically tried to fill the needs of those around me, um, you know, on a strategic level and otherwise. And so I would constantly kind of like pour myself out to other people and really just try to be a real person. I never went, you know, if you, you'll watch, you, as you've you seen the season, you, you don't hear Brett saying, I'm in alliance with you, I'm right. in alliance with you. I didn't do that. I, well, I we didn't get to see too much of Who's you, Brett but most we of kept season. hearing about I, you. I, I, Every I, time we did an interview, like we a, kept hearing about uh -huh. what an awesome, awesome social game that you had. Yeah, yeah I, I played it, I mean... Not to toot my own horn, but I played a pretty solid social game, and you know, I don't know if that was communicated to the mass audience. No, we didn't get to see it. That's why I was curious. You know, yeah. What, what that meant? Does it mean that you were sharing personal things about yourself to the others? No, I mean, or you were it, helping them in some way. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you can imagine, some people approach the game. I want to, I want to be in alliance with someone. I want to do this. I want to make this happen to get to where I need to go, and that's almost in some capacity a selfish pursuit. And so what I try to do is just be present with people because I knew that if I were to create like an actual relationship with someone, trust would spawn off as a result of that, and that trust would dictate that relationship, where there'd be like a bond to work together beyond just saying like, "Okay, let's do this, let's do this." There, um, that's where so the like bromance the, test came from. Did yeah, you get like to know me, emotions. right? Is yeah, that how you started yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, essentially, like when I asked that question, as silly as it is, and you know, without context, it's like, well, "What's this guy trying to say?" But you know. 
the way I chose to play the game and the way Natalie chose to play the game was to be relational, to actually identify yourself as a human being within that within another person and find the human in the other person and that's ultimately why she won is because people are like able to connect with her on a human level and you know that just goes to show that even the most strategic person you know not necessarily going to win the game exactly uh, well but balanced. social 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 strategy is hard to communicate to a mass audience yeah saying i found multiple mini idols easy to communicate but to say that you know i I created these type of interactions with these people, and I did this and this. It's a little bit harder to to communicate. Yeah, it's hard so, to see. So it's, it's it's equally or more valuable. Obviously, yeah. in this season, what's next most for valuable. you? Um, I have a clothing company called the Bonnie Women of Our Hearts. One of my shirts right here. Yeah. It's um, still a little t-shirt, but uh, basically what it is, it's a convergence between apparel and advocacy, um, and advocacy for promoting healthy body image and self-esteem. And so pretty much what we're trying to do oh, excellent. with the clothing is just kind of be a light in an industry that portrays kind of a distorted image yeah. or portrayal of beauty and just to you know encourage people to feel comfortable with themselves and um, you know you'll see you look down and see it's like okay it's an upside down heart graphic and you know for the person that's wearing it they look down and you know the heart is right side up and what symbolically what that's supposed to kind of portray is that rather than focusing on a sheer ex exterior perspective like okay how am I going to look to these other people it's like looking down your mind like I need to look about I need to con concern myself with how I perceive myself first yeah. and foremost first love before, yourself or yeah love yourself before you, you know, and to not to also, it kind of goes coincides with how do you define yourself, and to define yourself from within rather than from what it is that's, you know, in your in your environment around you. Good deal. So. Thanks, Brett. Congratulations yeah. on the three immunity wins. That Thank was you. awesome, Appreciate and it. we enjoyed seeing you this season. Awesome. Appreciate that you guys' awesome. time. Uh, Thanks. Thank you.